What's up, everybody? Frawls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jamie John. And we have an album review for you. So another one that came out on the week of the 26th of August that I definitely have my eyes on just because I have one album by this band. It was the one that came out before this one, and I really liked it. And that's generally enough for me to want to check it out. Plus, I heard a lot of hype about this. We're going to go over the latest offering from Dreadnought, The Endless. This again comes out on the 26th of August on Profound Lore Records. This band formed in 2012 in Colorado Springs. This is their fifth album overall. I didn't get into them until their last album, Emergence, which again, I thought was really good. And all right, uh, this band's sound is uh, kind of different. It's post-metal, I'd say progressive metal and doom metal. And folk metal. Folk, neo-folk. Yep. A lot of blending here to create a very engaging interesting sound um i again really like the last one i think this one man this this remarkably flows well and holy shit what a sound i actually never really heard this band before i think i've heard a maybe a song in passing and just kind of wrote it off because i i didn't think it was heavy enough but this i actually really fucking liked Beautiful, big, lush soundscapes. Pretty at times, doomy at times, definitely jammy at times. Blackened. Blackened at times. at times. There's like Irish folk songs meet like doom metal meet like 70s prog. It's all over the map. It really is. And like it's, it's how this album flows. And it's that sort of like post metal, post rock sort of vibe. Like, Stuff like Caspian or uh, Cripple Black Phoenix, you know, heavy, but like more heavy in terms of like emotion. Like sonically, it definitely gets heavy, especially when you get down to insanely heavy breakdowns on the title track, which are driven by the bass, which I think is really cool. Like the main chunkiness is driven by the bass and the synth sort of layering it, and then the guitar is sort of free to do these dissonant melodies and. I, it's kind of like just a different sort of vibe, like kind of comparable to Yob, but not as like absolutely crushing, but right. possibly just as depressing. So the record opens with the song World's Break, very pretty, melodic, ambient opening, very soft, sweet female vocals, all right? Not normally what two you think of, of. Yeah, and two of them, and they, they harmonize so well together, but the, the vocalist reminds me a lot of like Tori Amos, and uh, Beth Gibbons from Portishead, but like a slightly angrier version of both, because while they do, but both these women sing very beautifully, they also scream quite intensely, which was something I wasn't normally expecting because the, the way that these songs all kind of flow together, they're, they're not alluding necessarily to heavy parts, but even the, some parts that aren't heavy are screamed over, and those are really cool. And they're more like blackened shrieks. They yep. sound desperate and cold, and again, I think that really changes the mood overall of the song. It's interesting that, they, you know, like, almost every song, it feels like they're all, like, good slow builds. They build in layers, and they're building towards something. And usually it's a giant crescendo, but they're different yep. kinds of crescendos. Yes. And it gets me excited to, like, what comes next and how they change. Seamless. Yeah, it's not like a typical transition where, say, there's an there's instrumentation that, that obviously alludes to a coming transition. There's a no cue, yeah. there's no drum break, there's no cue. It just kind of melts into the next transition. It's just like, okay, it flows into another part. So it's like being on a, a a ride, yeah, you know, pretty much. You're you're just there, like you kind of saw the hill coming, but you know the drop came quicker than you thought. And I'm terrified of roller coasters, so this is a terrible <laughs> comparison. One of my favorite examples of these awesome transitions and changing around the mood, Liminal Veil. First off, I think this is the longest song on here. Uh, it's what about nine, nine minutes? Nine minutes and three seconds or something. It's yeah. fucking awesome. Starts off with some of the most impassioned vocals on the album. Like the guitarist's vocals sound more like powerful, like they're more projecting. Because mm -hmm. a lot of these are very breathy and kind of sultry sounding. Like there's a lot of stuff in here that remind me of Stevie Nicks, and that's fucking awesome because she's still probably up there with one of my favorite female singers mm -hmm. in rock. But how it starts off very kind of grounded, very organic sounding, and that kind of ties in with the production, which the production here is awesome it sounds yes. like this was like recorded live in a fucking room and that is the perfect vibe for this and it sounds like it was mixed really well in that open room like although there are 
prominent instruments in this album because you hear a lot of piano um, and the, the bass really carries a lot of Ooh. melody too. Aside from the vocals being just a smidge high in the mix, all the instruments for the most part don't overpower each other. You can individually hear the bass and the guitars and the keyboards and the, the piano and they, they all just mesh so well together. But again, Liminal Veil starts off very grounded, very earthy, and then kind of just takes a trip out into space. It gets very cosmic. And this is one of the things I love about this album. And we were just bringing this up in terms of like more progressive material when it comes down to keys and synths. This band gets it right. They layer everything and it's a very organic sound. Like there's lots of 80s synths, lots of Moog synth sounds mm -hmm. in there. And it contributes heavily to the atmosphere and the vibe. They match up with the vocals, the guitars. And like you were saying about the bass, how the bass can really drive a song along yeah. with the drums. That kind of frees up the guitar to do like more atmospheric stuff. Like it's not the most riffy style in terms of the guitar work. There are some mm -hmm. like good riffy hooks in here, but a lot of it is just contributing to the atmosphere and it sort of melds in with the synths in like a very haunting way. Yes. Well, this album does get dark at times. Um, there's definitely some like post doom metal sounds in Liminal Veil. There's a chuggy kind of riffy section in Gears of Violent Endurance. While this does get heavy at times, it doesn't get heavy in the sense of like riffy brutality, the typical things we usually talk about on this channel. It more gets heavy of like a really dark kind of dreary kind of almost haunting vibe and that's the heaviness of the song it's in the atmosphere not necessarily in the riff progressions yeah i mean it's it's in the vocal delivery yep. too and honestly like it, it's weird i was thinking about like all right this is definitely doom adjacent you know very much akin to a ton of doom bands but also again like sort of this neo folk black metal like wayfarer yep. and i would even say like the more recent proggy leanings of like recent opath albums too but when it comes down to like the doom sound, generally I think of doom as wallowing, just yep. stuck in the fucking murk and misery of life. And while this album sounds kind of depressed, it also sounds adventurous. Like I'm just gonna mm -hmm. get up and have a fucking walk instead of sitting here on the couch eating potato chips. Like right. uh, I'm gonna see if I can walk off this suppression and have right, an adventure. Exactly. I'm not gonna sit in my bedroom in the dark watching fucking Who's the Boss or he runs. Oh, time for a good yep. Netflix and cry. Yep, exactly. That's not gonna be it. I'm not gonna stay inside. It's actually a decent day outside. Maybe I'll go take a walk and see what happens. And that's a lot of what happens in this album. Uh, especially the last track, The Paradigm Mirror. It's really actually quite calming and soothing, very zen-like. There's not really so much, by the way, of even like drum beats even. It's mostly quiet piano and vocals and it kind of reminds me of that band Bended Knee that we saw open up for Haken, another female fronted kind of jam band. But here it's just a, it's just really dreamy and, and kind of like whimsical, but the very sweet vocals. The synths and the vocals take over on that one. And it's it's a really cool mood. Like, I don't know, like the sun dawning on a new day, except, I don't know, it, it kind of has like an 80s sort of like, like maybe like Tangerine Dream. So that's also like kind of 70s. Like yeah. the synths are so out front. They're big, they're washy, they're huge. They just sort of coat the song in a big synthy blanket. I don't know if they make those. That might have been an 80s thing too. I don't know. A big synthy blanket. Give me your synthy blanket. I am cold. A synthy Afghan. Like a synthy Snuggy, except without the shame and embarrassment of actually owning a Snuggy. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I own a Snuggy. Shame. It's not a big deal. And embarrassment. Dude. It's warm as fuck. I don't care. You I don't should. Care. I feel snug as a bug in a rug. Or, or a loser in a Snuggie. <laughs> or in this case, uh, engulfed in the, the dark warmth of this beautiful album. Nice pivot. You're still fired. Thank you. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of cool standout dynamics on here. Like, there's always some giant catchy spot in a song. And I mean, if you got like eight to nine minutes of song, there better be. But again, like that whole feeling of building to different crescendos and really cool transitions. In Gears of Violent Endurance, there's a really cool just vocal break between the two mm -hmm. singers. And it's almost kind of like a nod to like Queen in a way, or like bands like Gentle Giant or Yes, where they would actually kind of like have these cool vocal harmonies between all the singers. And that cascades into just really cool, proggy, sort of dreamy synthiness. And I don't know, like I just 
really dig that. Like these nods to old school prog mixed with this doomy atmosphere. It just seems to work. And the drum work in that song is actually, that's the first time that the drums really get fairly intensive and like he's all over the place, big giant turnovers. A majority of this record though, as far as the drum work is concerned, is like he just uses the drums as like a basic kind of like background pulse almost. There's a lot of tribal drums, there's a lot of tom work, and a lot of cymbal work, but it's almost like he doesn't use the drums as a full instrument to keep a beat to the song because the rest of the instruments do that so well. But I like the fact that everything is is just accented and pulsed and there's always like a drive to it, but it's not necessarily overdone with drums. Very fluid. Yeah. And I, I just yeah. kind of like the whole vibe of it. Like, it kind of mixes in with, like, the ebb and the flow of, mm -hmm. like, just, you know, the songs in general. Reminded me a lot of Isis. You know, Isis during the, like, yep. softer moments in songs. Like, it would take on an interesting, like, kind of off-time tribal pattern. And I, I think he just adds a lot. Like, there are parts where he definitely gets much heavier. Yes. Like, you know, adds to, like, breakdowns and such like that. But it's, I don't know, kind of that whole spacey trip. Like, the whole thing, I don't know, it's like floating through the fucking ether. Except I don't know, if you look at the cover of the album with that chick just, like, standing in this giant void, like, cave void-like thing, and it looks like she's walking into, like, the beginning of the valley, and you can see the opening of the cave. And, like, you get that whole idea with this record. It's vast. Yeah. Huge atmosphere. And again, kind of like just taking a walk around. I mean, honestly, I think what lurks on the other side of that giant cave, gateway, whatever it is, is probably this album, because this album doesn't look like it could fit on that cover. Nope. It's absolutely massive sounding, and it's so easy to get lost in. Yes. Like, this yep. almost runs as one giant, like, 42-minute song, because the songs transition into one another mm -hmm. so well, mm -hmm. and... Again, there's so many good peaks and valleys in here. It holds your attention. I think the songwriting is absolutely fantastic. The slow builds on a lot of these songs, like you really feel like the emotions start yeah. to raise up. It's like, oh, I wonder what they're going to do. Like, this is going to cap it off so fucking well. And that's pretty much the entire album in a nutshell. Yep. Overall, I mean, even in those like heavy moments, just the way it builds it, when even when it explodes into something, it's not like a full on jam. It explodes into like another mode, another emotion, another yeah. mood, another vibe, so to speak. Different ways of releasing tension, mm -hmm. because the whole thing is that, you know, the tension and the release, and you don't necessarily always have to like release tension in a breakdown. Granted, that's kind of I mean, it's what kind we of, listen you know, to a lot. That's kind of our, our motive, but I mean. But I like, what they do here. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I, In terms of gripes on this album, I was kind of struggling to find some, and the only thing that I found that I guess I could say is the opening track and the closing track I don't think are nearly as strong as the tracks in between. Like, I think they're good. I think they're yep. really good, yep. and they kind of bookend the album well because I feel like, you know, the opening track's a good starting point. It kind of gets you used to what you're going to hear, but everything you hear after that, I think, is just... Fucking yeah, amazing. Midnight Moon, The Endless, Liminal Veil, and Gears of Violent Endurance. Those four songs Ugh. are brilliant. And then the last track, it's a good closing piece as it's like a little bit more calming and the like twisted dark journey that you just went on. Mm -hmm. But it didn't grab me like the other songs in terms of like just waiting for these huge fucking songs to be constructed right in front of me. But that isn't very much of a dig, is it? That's just me praising it. Uh, slightly not as good as I did before. So, uh, yeah, this album is awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it four stars. This is really fucking good. I was really lost in this. I like the elements of like folk and doom and post-rock, mm -hmm. post-metal. It blends together so well and God, the, the seamless transitions, like it's, it's just easy to get lost in the song. It's like, wow, it changed. Where did it change? I don't even care. I'm, I'm here right now. This is fucking cool. I like the fact that it's lavish, but it's not self-indulgent. Like, there's not a lot of just <laughs> bullshit noodling. This doesn't feel like it's excessive in any part. Like, everything just kind of fits. This is uh, what I would look for in Prague, and I, I guess do mostly Prague. And post-rock, too. Like, I don't know. Like, there's just a great combination of Atmosphere and instrumentation, I strongly recommend this if you're a fan of, again, like, more atmospheric bands, especially like Wayfair, and again, like Caspian, um, Cripple Black Phoenix, stuff like that. This is definitely in that vein. Check this shit out. Well, shit, you didn't leave me a whole lot to say. It's also a four for me, and I pretty much knew that before we hit the end of the record. I looked at Nick, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna be honest, I'm sitting at a four. This record is more of a, 
a, a mood and a vibe than it is much more of, uh, I mean, there are some jammy sections, there are some proggy sections. Uh, again, the vocals are simply beautiful. Mm. Um, but the way that these guys construct these songs allow the songs to kind of move freely within the confines of a box, we'll say. Like, the, there's this huge fucking box, and within this box there's this giant song that has no boundaries and just goes wherever it wants. But somehow it still creates a mood and like there's ebbs and flows and like sometimes you feel really happy and really like boy this is a pretty part of this song and then they take you into the depths of hell and they go do me and you're just like wow that's crazy again this is not something typical like I, I'm I'm really at a loss of words on how to really fully describe this except to say like it's like Proggy Mastodon meets Isis meets uh you know, Tori Amos, like I said, it, there, there's a lot going on, but it, it's a great listen. At no point did it lose my attention. In fact, I was pretty much hanging on every every moment of, of the song, wondering what they were gonna do. It's like a thing of molding clay. Like you get this big old chunk of clay and then you set it on the table, then you start to smooth it out and you notice that all of it just kind of melts into each other. There aren't lines anymore. You're just thumbing over the lines to make it all smooth and, and kind of flow together. And that's how this worked as far as transitions were concerned. Cause it just, it was like molding the clay. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but it's a four. <laughs> Check out this record. It was a great listen. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link in our Thralls of Metal site, which is linked down below. You can also stop by there and check out our shirts, and we may or may not have some new stuff coming. Got some new merch coming. You notice this sexy fucking hat? Yeah. I mean, it does Thralls look pretty good. Hat. It looks pretty good, dude. I uh, actually wear it. Wear it a lot. I don't even like promoting my own channel because I think it's kind of, you know. I mean, do people come up to you and say, hey, Thrall's Metal, I've heard of those dudes. Like, you shouldn't have. They're fucking you terrible people. You shouldn't have. People. They're idiots. Necrotic dick. Yeah. Nick, I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> Freudian slip. Cramming John. <laughs> don't ask what he's cramming because this is, well, not a family channel, but we can't talk about that. And, of course, thank you to everyone that has watched, liked, subscribed, commented, all that stuff. I know... The big thank you part. There we go. And I know, I gotta say something different, but I rarely ever do because uh, I'm not that creative. I just want to thank you guys because you're all fucking awesome and you keep us fucking going. Plenty more coming on the channel. We are eventually going to get together for that Pantera ranking. It's coming. It's coming. And after that, on to Mastodon and Crowbar, and then we can pick some new bands. So yeah. lots to look forward to. So because you've been good, I'm going to thank you one more time. Thank you. And we will catch you later.